In this video, we are going to look at columns within Brizzy. If you have no idea what columns are and how layouts work within page builders, I recommend also that you start watching our video on blocks first because those are the building blocks within Brizzy. If you've worked with page builders before, you will know the concepts of sections, which we call blocks in Brizzy, as well as columns and rows. By default, whenever you bring in a new block within Brizzy, you get two columns. So we'll kick off with columns, and then after this video, you can go and watch the one on rows, because that will give you an idea of what differentiates the row element from the columns element. We bring in a new block by going to your Add a New Block, and then we choose Add a Blank Block. As I've mentioned before, by default, it comes in with two columns. You know it is a column because it has a blue bounding box. You can see it over here. Now, a column is a container. It is something that allows you to keep other things inside. Often when I talk to people about it and I try to explain to them exactly what a container is, I talk about a food container. I tell them, imagine you want to store some leftovers in the fridge, then you get a container and you put the leftovers within the container. And that is what a column element is all about. It contains your content. Let's work quickly with these two columns that I've brought in. Firstly, you can adjust the size of these columns. Grab the handlebar between the two columns, click and hold, and you will see in the heads up display it says 50 to 50, and that is the width of these two columns at the moment. The one on the left is 50% of the width, and the one on the right also 50%. If I drag to the left, you will see the percentages change and you can finally attune it exactly to the position you want. For example, here I have it 33% on the left and 67% on the right. And if I want to do, uh, let's say around 25% here, then I can do it like so. Let's put it back in the middle at 50% and see how do we add new columns. To do that, you simply go to the settings of the column that is accessed over here, click on it, and then click on the plus that will add a new column. Now you have three columns, and each of them, if you click on the handlebar, at 33.3%. Let's quickly have a look at the settings of the columns before we bring in an element. Let's click on the settings here, and the first one is a background. You can add any image to the background of a column, and this will act independently from the content elements that you want to bring in. One of the great things about the column background is that in the hover state, you can bring in a different image. So if I want to do that, now, if I put it back on default and you hover over the column, the image will change. You can even change the selector in hover mode. So if I do that, let's delete the image, and then in hover mode, let's bring in the same image, I slightly adjust the focus point. Now, when I hover over it, it will move like this. Very nice effect that can be achieved. Also within columns, you can add an overlay. Go to the colors within the toolbars options and add an overlay. If you want the background to be solid, you put the opacity at full. Remember to remove the image as well. The overlay can be solid or gradient, as well as borders can be applied and shadows to the columns. All of this with hover state options. The column is also a linkable element that allows you to bring in your own URL, the anchor within any other thumbnail within the Brizzy page, or if you have the pro version, you can add a pop-up. If you click on settings, you have a great feature over here, the content alignment. Let's bring in a few elements here. I will bring in a text element for the first one, an image element in the second one, and let's bring in an icon in the third one. Let's go to the third column and say we want this icon to be in the middle aligned. Go to the column settings, settings, and over here, you can choose it for the middle or the bottom. Apart from this, you have more settings that gives you full control over padding, margins, as well as applying corners. But wait, there's more, and there usually is. Columns allow you also to work columns within columns. If I go to the Add Elements, you will see down here, the column is actually an element by itself. You can drag it into another column, but you can also bring it into different levels. For example, 
Let me drag it under this one. Wait until you see the thick gray line and then drop it. Now you have two columns over here. Let's bring in a second one. For this one, we can add maybe a few more columns. Let's bring in another one. Like this three. And you can see you can quickly build up a structure that's going to look really good on your site, depending on what you want to display. Now, let's bring in columns within columns. Before we do that, remember that a column is identifiable by the blue bounding box. A column within a column. Drag the column and drop it within a column. And now you will see two columns appear, and these have pink bounding boxes. This is the end of the line. You cannot add more columns within columns within columns. If you try to do that, it will just add another column to the existing two that you already have. All the styling features for this column exist as it does for the blue one, which means you can put images within images within images on backgrounds within backgrounds. It can get either very hectic or very creative. One thing to note is that you don't need a column to bring in an element. If I go to add elements and I want to bring in a countdown element, you will see that I can drop it within the columns. But if I go below and I see the thick gray line and I drop it, this will appear as a container independently within the block. It is not within a column. We know that because when I click on it, I see the options toolbar pop up here, but I do not see a blue bounding box. If I drag it and I put it within a column, it looks like this. You see the blue bounding box. So remember, you do not need columns to bring in content, but there is a benefit of putting things within a column. In this example, I'm going to delete these two columns. And I'll show you the benefit of putting elements within a column. If I bring in a number of other elements within this column, like so, I now have three elements within this column. If I go to mobile responsiveness, let's say into tablet, and I feel I want to add some padding on the left and the right, I only need to go to the column settings and then go to padding and add more space on the left and the right. This makes it very easy to style your elements within your responsive views. If I did not have this column, I had to go to each and every element separately and apply margins and padding. We go back to our desktop and bring in again another column element under this one over here. You can put within a column a row element and check out the video for the row element to understand when you would use a row element instead of a column. Click and drag, and if you drop it inside here, you will see the gray dotted bounding box for the row element with two columns by default inside. Again, you can delete it, but if you delete the last column, it will also delete the row. At the end of the day, the column is probably the most essential element on any website that you can think of. They give you the structure you need and it allows you a lot of control over your content. For more tutorials on how to work with both the free and pro versions of Brizzy, join us here on YouTube by subscribing. Also, hop over to our Facebook community and check out our website for the latest news at brizzy.io.